what's going on guys it's max max 24 and this thursday is the game awards 2021 one of the biggest night in video games all right i love the game awards i watch it every year jeff Keighley comes on stage announces the winners announces new games it's fantastic if you have not watched the game awards you really should watch the game awards but with game awards comes awards obviously and a lot of nominees i mean a lot there are 30 categories for the game awards 2021 and there's like five to six, seven people in each in each category. So today, we're going to go ahead and make my predictions. I'm going to see how close to the actual awards I get. I make the prediction video every year, and this year is no different. Before any of that, please always do remember to drop a like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, you know, all, just, all the fun stuff us YouTubers tell you guys who do. Follow me on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I open most on Twitter, sometimes on Facebook, barely ever on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok also. I'm very active on TikTok. Follow me on Facebook, subscribe to me here. And with that, let's predict the Game Awards 2021. And if you want to put in the comments below what your predictions are for this year's Game Awards, let me know down below. So we're going to start off with the awards, then we're going to predict some game announcement, and it's going to be great. So first off, one of the first, we're going to get some of the boring categories out of the way. The categories I really don't know because I don't care, uh, which is going to be mostly the esports categories. So the best esports event... For the nominees for that, we have the 2021 League of Legends World Championship, the International 21, well, the International 2021 PGL Major Stockholm 2021, PUBG Mobile Global Championship 2020, and the Valorant Championship Tour Stage 2 Masters. That's a lot of words. I don't watch esports. I don't care about esports. I don't care about any of these games, really. But I think if someone's going to win, it's probably going to be League of Legends. All right, League of Legends is probably one of the biggest um esports things that we have so it only makes sense that it's league of legends but it could be pubg mobile since that's the first big mobile game esport nominated and they're gonna be like oh look at mobile games have a place here too let's make a statement but it's probably it's probably gonna be you know, league of legends and then after that we have the best esports coach again i don't know any of these people i've never heard any of their names so i'm just gonna see we got um, Eric Silent, guy, whatever, I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I'm just gonna do their code name. Silent, E-N-G-H, um, Bad, or Crowder, and Kakoma. I don't know any of these people. I don't. Um, I see Crowder's got a, got a FaZe sweatshirt on. I know that everybody knows about FaZe, so maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's that one, you know? high possibility because you know phase and i've heard the name phase before so i think my expert opinion is it's crowder all right now we have the best esports team again i don't care about esports i don't watch esports so i really don't know but we have the atlanta phase who play cod dwg kia who play league of legends natus vinceri who plays counter-strike go sentinels who play valorant and team spirit who play dota 2 i know phase I, i've heard that name on the internet i don't know any of these other people i've never heard of these people before oh my cat is joining the video now so that's great hello hello hi what brings you here okay again i know phase i've heard the name phase and then there's also the league people so like I'm just, I know FaZe, so I'm going to go with FaZe. I, 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 I've heard that name before on the internet. Best Esports Athlete. Again, a category I know nothing about. How many times do I have to say that? But we have Simp, Showmaker, Collapse, Simple, and Tens. What, what do you guys play? I like Simp. I like his name. Simp. You're, yep, I think you're going to do it. Good job, Simp. Okay, yeah, then we have the Best Esports Game, sponsored by Grubhub, which makes complete sense. For those, we have Call of Duty. Counter-Strike Go, Dota 2, League of Legends, and Valorant. Well, if League of Legends wins the best esports event, I think it's going to win the best esports game, hands down. Don't really hear much about Dota 2 esports. Valorant is the newest one on the scene. I don't really hear a lot of people who play a lot of Valorant. All right, I know it exists. I know people play it, but... And CSGO and Call of Duty, I hope an Activision Blizzard game doesn't win. So, I'm going to go with League, you know, because I know League, and if League wins the other thing, then, you know... Okay, then we have the most anticipated game presented by Prime Gaming, and that's Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel, or Starfield. And this is the hard one for me. 
All right, I know personally out of that list, my most anticipated games are probably Horizon Forbidden West and Starfield. I love Horizon Zero Dawn. I thought it was a phenomenal game. Starfield, I love me some Bethesda titles, so I'm really excited for Starfield because it's a brand new IP by Bethesda. But I think, I think that the people are going to vote for God of War Ragnarok or the sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I do, because Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was just huge, huge event, this huge title, and the God of War from 2018 was also a huge title but elden ring also has a really high possibility this is a tough one this is a tough one but i think it's gonna go to the sequel to legend of zelda breath of the wild personally i want it to go to horizon forbidden west or starfield but i think it's gonna be the sequel to, to breath of the wild i really do because that only makes sense based on how i think the people vote and you know what they do next up we have the best debut indie game these are brand new independent studios with their first big game and for that, we have The Artful Escape, The Forgotten City, Kena, Bridge of Spirits, Sable, and Valheim. Personally, I think it's going to go Valheim, all right? Kena, Bridge of Spirits, I'm really interested in that. I have not touched it yet, but it looks so good. So good, all right? It looks like a Pixar movie come to life, so I want to check that out. But the waves that Valheim created in the gaming industry when they came out, the amount of success that Valheim reached in the first week of its release... I think Valheim has the strongest possibility to win this award. All right. I barely played Valheim. I owned it. I bought it because everybody bought it when it first came out. I barely played it. But seriously, the amount of buzz that game got was just over the top. Next up is Content Creator of the Year. Of course, these are content creators. I don't see my name up there, Jeff Keighley. What's going on? Where's my name? Where's my game award? I think I deserve it over my high quality youtube and tiktok videos i do I, I think i deserve it but the nominees for that are dream fuzzly gals iba and Gruff. Gr i don't know any of you i've heard of dream am i old because i don't know any of these content creators i don't i've never heard half these names before again i've heard of dream because you know People, kids talk about Dream all the time, and the internet talks about Dream all the time. I've not heard of any of the people, any of them, any of them. What's going on? Hmm? I think I'm old. I do, but I'm just, I'm just gonna go Dream because I've heard the Dream name and I like his little, his little, his little picture. Okay, the best multiplayer game. Of course, these are the games with the best multiplayer. That makes sense. For those, we got Back for Blood, Knockout City, It Takes Two, Modern Hunter Rise, New World, and Valheim. I think Valheim has a really big chance of winning debut debut indie game. I don't know if it's going to pull the same for best multiplayer. It has a high chance, but I think It Takes Two deserves this game, okay? It Takes Two deserves this award so much, right? It Takes Two is a cooperative game. It's just a beautifully made game. It's phenomenally well done. The story is so adorable. It's got so much heart. If It Takes Two doesn't win this award, that's a crime. It Takes Two for best multiplayer, hands down. Next up, we have the best sports slash racing game. Of course, these are the racing games. For that, we have F1 2021, FIFA 2022, Forza Horizon 5, Hot Wheels Unleashed, and Riders Republic. And I, it better go to Forza Horizon 5. Forza Horizon 5 is just a, the next level of racing simulators, all right? It's a phenomenally well done game. It looks gorgeous. It plays gorgeously. It's so much fun. The cars are amazing. It's a phenomenal title. They really knocked it out of the park with this one. I'm surprised Hot Wheel Unleash is nominated because I'm pretty sure that got bad reviews. Did it? I think it did. And then FIFA 2022 is up here too. And that's just, you're just throwing EA a bone there, aren't you? You're just like, EA, you want an award, right? Here you go. No, it's going to be Forza Horizon 5. It's hands down Forza Horizon 5. Phenomenal title. If you've not played it, go play it. Next up, we have the best sim strategy game. This is my kind of games. I love me some strategy games. I love me some sim games. All right. We got Age of Empires 4, Evil Genius 2 World Domination, Humankind, Inscription, and Microsoft Flight Simulator. And this one isn't even a contest. All right. It's not. It's not. One, I don't know why they put sim and strategy together because... Literally, there's only, like, one simulator. The rest are strategy. No, there's two simulators. The rest are strategy games, I think. Maybe. I don't know. But it's going to go to Microsoft Flight Simulator. 
out of all of these games, Microsoft Flight Simulator is just top tier. Seriously. You look at Age of Empires 4, great game. You look at Evil Genius 2, mediocre game. You look at Humankind, interesting game. And then you look at Inscription, and nobody's ever heard of Inscription. But Microsoft Flight Simulator, that game is it's not a game. It's not a game. It's a simulator. It's a true simulator. You get into planes, and you fly across the world. A picturesque world. It looks real. It looks like you could reach out and touch the buildings. It looks like you could reach out and touch the plane, all right? Microsoft Flight Simulator is the next level of simulator, so that's definitely going to win this award. Next up, we have the best family game. Now, this is no surprise here. Literally all but one of these are Nintendo. We got It Takes Two, Mario Party Superstars, New Pokemon Snap, Super Mario 3D World, Bowser's Fury, and WarioWare Get It K Together. And I think if It Takes Two does not win the best multiplayer or whatever it was, then that's a crime, but it should win the best party game then, seriously. But the problem is, I wouldn't consider like It Takes Two on the same level as some of these. I don't even really consider New Pokemon Snap. I mean, like It Takes Two, it's two players, all right? Super Mario, well, Mario Party Superstars is up to four players. Super Mario 3D World is up to a lot of players. Warrior Wars is up to a lot of players. So if I was going to consider best family game, I think it would be Mario Party Superstars or Super Mario 3D World. Personally, I'd give it to 3D World because Superstars is good and all, but it's a Mario Party. All right, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't really reinvent the system with the wheel or anything. It's Mario Party. It's Mario Party how we knew it. It's an old game, kind of like a, re it's kind of like a remaster. All right, Super Mario 3D World, it's an old game too, but the re the but Bowser's Fury the humongous update that came with it like that's 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 a new that's a new game all right I think it's Super Mario 3D World I think it deserves that and then we got best fighting game all right and I've only heard of oh, two of these we got Demon Slayer with a lot of words we got Guilty Gear we got Melty Blood we got Nickelodeon All Star Brawl and we got Virtua Fighter Five I wanted to go to Nickelodeon All Star Brawl I I do all right Nickelodeon All Star Brawl it's Nickelodeon, okay? It's like the only game that you can have Aang beat up SpongeBob. Who doesn't want to play as Aang beating up SpongeBob, all right? Who doesn't want to take Patrick and beat the crap out of Invader Zim, all right? Who doesn't want to do that? But there's no voice acting, which is a huge, a huge missed opportunity for this game that really hurts it. I think, I don't think it's going to go to that. I could see it going to whatever, Virtua Fighter 5. I feel like people like that. I feel like, I feel like I've heard that name before. I don't. I want to go to Clinton All-Star Brawl, though. I really do. I, I think, it, I think it, but it's not going to go to that. Next up, we have the best role-playing game. And Jeff's really showing his his uh, CD Projekt Red bias on this one. Cyberpunk 2077, Monster Hunter Rise, Scarlet Nexus, Shin Megami Tensei V, and Tales of Arise. If it goes to Cyberpunk 2077, No. Just no. Cyberpunk CD Projekt Red does not deserve an award for Cyberpunk 2077. They don't. They don't. All right. They they really don't. No. If anything, it should go to uh, Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise, phenomenal game. People love Monster Hunter Rise. It's not Cyberpunk. That's all that matters. If it goes to Cyberpunk, I'm seriously, I'm, I'm turn, I'm, I'm turning it off. I'm turning off the game awards. It better. Go, it's gonna go to Monster Hunter Rise. All right. Full send Monster Hunter Rise. Then the best action adventure game. These are the best action adventure games. Okay, I didn't think I had to spell them out for you, but we got Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, great game. Metroid Dread, great game. Psychonauts 2, great game. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, great game. Resident Evil Village, great game. As a toughie, personally, I think it should go to Rift Apart. I really do. I think Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is the next is a phenomenal title. Really great story. It's really short, which kind of hurts it, and I'm just I wanted more really badly. But Insomniac is great at what they do, and they made a great game with Ratchet and Clank. So I want it to be Ratchet and Clank. Then we got best action game, all right? And for here, this we got Back for Blood, Chivalry 2, Deathloop, Far Cry 6, and Returnal. It's gonna go to Deathloop or Returnal. Ever since those games came out, I've heard nothing but praise about both those games. I have not heard any praise about Far Cry 6. I've not heard anybody talk about Back for Blood. And Chivalry 2 is Chivalry 2. All right, that's not much more to say on that one. Deathloop and Returnal, though, I've heard so many good things. I've heard so many people loving Deathloop. They didn't think they would love it, but they love it. I think Deathloop has the biggest opportunity to win this out of those two options. Then we got the best VR AR game. I personally, I do not have a VR system, so I don't get to live to experience these games, which is sad. But 
We got Hitman 3, I Expect You to Die 2, Lone Echo 2, Resident Evil 4, and Sniper Elite VR. I mean, I don't know. I don't know VR games because I don't have a VR system, but I don't know what's good, all right? I, maybe Resident Evil 4 was good, it, probably good, probably terrifying, so I'm going to go Resident Evil 4, all right? Resident Evil 4, great game, love it. Okay, innovation and accessibility. These are games that just took the next level for for accessibility, which is great, all right? For these, we got, well, it's sponsored by Chevrolet, so Chevy, Chev Chev Chevrolet, Chevrolet, Chevrolet. Why am I having a hard time saying it? But this is, a, okay, it doesn't matter. For this category, we got Far Cry 6, Forza Horizon 5, Guardians of the Galaxy, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and The Veil vale Shadow of the Crown. I think for accessibility reasons, it's, it's maybe, I'm trying to remember the accessibility options for these games. Far Cry 6, I don't think should deserve it. I don't know much about the fail, the veil, but I think Rift Apart had some really good accessibility options and so did Forza Horizon 5. I believe Forza Horizon 5 had some really good accessibility options. I think Forza Horizon 5, I just, I think they had some quality ones. I can't remember though. Best community support. These are, of course, the games that get the best community support. All right, they still have support to this day. They're getting a lot of updates. They're all this stuff. They got a great community. Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Final Fantasy 14 Online, Fortnite, and No Man's Sky. It's probably going to go to Final Fantasy 14 Online. It's probably going to go to that. The amount of buzz that that game has had ever since World of Warcraft's kind of been on the down low. Final Fantasy 14 has been up, and that like they revitalized the revitalized the entire game. It's completely different from how it launched. So I think. Final Fantasy XIV Online's got this. No Man's Sky, I think, has a huge possibility here, too. And so does Fortnite. But I think Final Fantasy XIV is probably going to take it home. Then we got the best mobile game presented by Verizon. Everybody loves mobile games, right? We got Fan Fantasian, Genshin Impact, League of Legends Wild Rift, Marvel Future Revolution, and Pokemon Unite. It's going to be Genshin Impact. The amount of talking, the amount of social media control that Genshin Impact had when that was big the amount of people who played genshin impact was wild i don't hear many people talk about wild rift i don't hear many people talk about future revolution i hear some people talk about pokemon unite i've never heard anybody talk about fantasian all right i think that out of all these genshin impact i think it's just it's just up here on another level as far as mobile games go i don't play mobile games but that i heard a lot about that one so then we got the best indie game for that we got 12 minutes death's door inscription kena bridge of spirits and loop hero i think it's going to be kena bridge of spirits again that game looks like it was made from a pixar movie it looks like a pixar movie a playable pixar movie it looks phenomenal all right the game plays phenomenal and looks phenomenal so kena bridge of spirits hands down next up we have the best ongoing games these are the games that receive constant updates and constant you know all that stuff we got Apex Legends, Final Fantasy XIV Online, Fortnite, Genshin Impact, and Call of Duty Warzone. I'm going to be very shocked if this doesn't go to Fortnite. All right, Fortnite is the amount of support and the amount of updates that Fortnite has gotten is just over the top. If it doesn't go to Fortnite, that's going to be weird. All right, I'm not a big fan of Fortnite, but even I can acknowledge its quality of updates. Games for Impact. These are for a thought-provoking games, things like that. All right, Before Your Eyes, Boyfriend Dungeon, Shikari, A Colorful Tale, Life is Strange, True Colors, and No Longer Home. I've heard of Boyfriend Dungeon, but Life is Strange, True Colors, I love the Life is Strange series. I think it's going to be Life is Strange, True Colors. It, how can it not be Life is Strange? How can it not be? Then we got the best performance. These are the best voice actors. Erica Mori as Alex Chen in Life is Strange, True Colors. Giancarlo Esposito as Anton Castillo in Far Cry 6. Jason Kelly as Colt Van in Deathloop. Maggie Robertson as Lady Dimitris, whatever, as Resident Evil Village, and somebody from Deathloop, o Ozioma Akaga as Juliana Blake. I probably butchered that name, but I think it'll probably go to that Maggie Robertson because who can't shut up about Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil Village? I don't know how to pronounce her name, but who can't shut up about her? The amount of internet memes, the amount of things throughout okay it's just it's just it's over the top i hate it but everybody knows who she is so i think it's gonna go to her i do like me some jean carlo esposito though best audio design these are games with the best audio design the best sound design death loop forza horizon 5 ratchet and clank rift apart resident evil village or returnal 
and I think it's going to go to Forza Horizon 5. I do, okay? Forza Horizon 5 has the best car sounds ever, the best ambiance ever. It's phenomenal. It's just, they outdid themselves in Forza Horizon 5. I, if it doesn't go to that, I'm going to be surprised. Best score in music. These are the, the, best, the best songs. And I think, and we got The Artful Escape, Cyberpunk 2077 again, Deathloop, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, and Near Replicant. Guardians of the Galaxy. It's got to go Guardians of the Galaxy. All right, that game has so many licensed songs, so many oh, great songs, great score, great everything. Guardians of the Galaxy. It better not go to Cyberpunk. Though. Best art direction. We got the Artful Escape, Deathloop, Kena Bridge of Spirits, Psychonauts 2, and Ratchet and Clank Ripped Apart. Again, Kena Bridge of Spirits looks like a freaking Pixar movie. That is phenomenal art. Psychonauts 2 is phenomenal art as well. But I really want Keena Bridge of Spirits. I think it deserves the attention. All right, I think it deserves all, all what it gets. But then we got best narrative. These are the games with the best narrative behind them. The phenomenal stories that gaming is known for. For that, we got Deathloop, It Takes Two, Life is Strange, True Colors, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, and Psychonauts 2. All of these games have some fantastic stories. They do. I love the stories in these games. But It Takes Two is just another level, right? It Takes Two is just a phenomenal story, okay? You, you got... You gotta give it to It Takes Two, all right? As much as I love the other games, if it doesn't go to It Takes Two, that's a crime. Then we got the best game direction. These are the games for that are the best creativity and the best, you know, design and stuff. We got Deathloop, It Takes Two, Returnal, Psychonauts 2, and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I think Psychonauts 2 or It Takes Two have the most chance here, all right? Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, great game, but it wasn't super creative it felt like ratchet and clank returnal great game but again i don't think it was super creative death loop again we've seen that before it takes two and psychonauts two however were different and it takes two especially i think it's got to go to it takes two again i do i think it takes two has the best game direction game of the year this is the final big one the game of the year the game that i think deserves it we got Deathloop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. Now, I gave It Takes Two a lot of these awards, so if those are to be believed, then It Takes Two would win Game of the Year. That's that's how it would work. But personally, I want it to be Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I love Ratchet and Clank. I want more Ratchet and Clank. And Rift Apart, I thought, was a phenomenal title. Again, I think It Takes Two is probably going to win this based on my other categories, but... I want it to be Ratchet and Clank. I, I, I really, I really want it to be Ratchet and Clank, like badly. Like if it's not Ratchet and Clank, I will cry. I will. I... But yeah, that is, that is all the awards for the Game Awards. Um, I hope that I got them right. Let me know what you, what you think is gonna be nominated, or I mean, what you think is gonna win, because I want to know what you think. If you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm dumb, if there's some games on here that I said I didn't know, and you're like, you're dumb. You should go play these and. They, are, they deserve to win. If you are a big esports fan and you saw the people I picked and you're like, you're dumb, why would they win? Then let me know. But the Game Awards are on Thursday. So I, next week, I'll be doing a little compare and contrast video. I'll be doing a little like duet kind of thing for this. And I'll be like, hmm, was I right? Was I dumb? Let's see. As far as game announcements go, those are always very hard to predict for the Game Awards. All right? Last year, we got the freaking Xbox Series X announcement. So... They're, like, impossible to predict. I th I think that we're probably going to get something from Colossal Order. They've already said that they're going to share something very soon. If you don't know Colossal Order, the people behind City Skylines. So, and they've said they're they're working on something, and you'll hear it very, very soon. That sounds like Game Awards. I'm assuming we'll see something from Microsoft. We might see something from Sony, especially since Microsoft beat them to the punch with the Xbox announcement last year. So they might be like, I want to get in on this. I want to be a part of this. Hey, Dale, I mean... Hideo Kojima loves Jeff Keighley, so maybe he'll bring something. CD Projekt Red loves Jeff Keighley, so maybe they'll bring something. It, they're like, it's impossible to predict, all right? It's really hard to predict. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what games are going to be revealed. He always makes it sound like it's going to be the biggest games in history. Oh, my gosh, this is the biggest, the biggest game awards. Oh, he, he overhypes the crap out of these things. But, again, I don't know what's going to be shown off. Maybe we'll get... Some look at it, one of the Warner Brothers games they've been working on, all right? Maybe we'll get a look at a TV show. I, I don't know. I, I really don't. But, yeah, let me know what you think is going to win. Let me know what you think. 
is going to be revealed. Let me know all that stuff. Let me know if you don't even watch the Game Awards. If you don't care, I'll be watching the Game Awards. I hope you do too. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please drop a like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, and all that jazz, all that fun stuff. I'll see you, Bruce. Tell you guys who do. And I hope to see you in the next. Thank <laughs> you.